Hey guys, and welcome back to another recipe paint. Um, okay. I have so much to say. And I'm gonna try to organize it in a way so it's not just like, you know, word bombing. So let's talk first about the speed paint. So this is a drawing I made, fan art, of one of my, I don't want to say favorite because I really don't have like a vivid memory of this anime. But it was one of the first animes I've ever watched as a, as a child. Um, it was called Super Cerdita in Spanish. Apparently in English it's called like Super Piggy, which is not surprising. Direct translation and in Japanese, Japanese, Japanese is called Tone de Burin, Burin. I don't know why I, I, I know how to pronounce things in Japanese because it's very much the same way we pronounce things in Spanish. But when I'm talking in English, I kind of like forget about it. And then I pronounce things awfully. Like most people that speak English pronounce Japanese things awfully because they put the like the pronunciation of vowels like they do in English, which is very wrong. But uh, anyways, this is the I'm already already word vomit. Um, but yeah, it was one of the first animes I ever watched. Um, I usually tend to rewatch my childhood animes um, older just to see, you know, if I remember anything or if it just didn't stand the test of time. But this one is the one that I kind of forgot for years, even though I can see moments in my life where I remember it. Like I remember when I was in like eighth grade, my mom got me like a pig plushie. Like this is a big pink pig pink plushie and I called it Super Cerita because of the anime and then I also remember my senior year or not yeah or was it no it was like my junior year so this girl from one of the one grade lower than us um she like skipped a year so she ended up in our grade and we became friends in high school and she had like very round cheeks and she could call herself Super Cerdita because she had a very round face um so I, yeah, I definitely can remember a few moments in my life with this anime it was like brought back to my conscience, like I'm conscious this exists, but for some reason I never did any research on it or just have very vague memories. So um, one day I think I was in stream or whatever and I randomly started singing the theme song and then I remember it and I Google it a little, I look a little bit at the manga stuff. And then I just forgot about it for like another two weeks. And then in the middle of the art block, I remembered it. And once again, I went and Googled it and looked at the manga covers. And I saw this manga cover you see in this speed paint. And I was like, oh, I kind of want to draw her. But I don't want, I don't know if I want to draw her piggy persona or her like normal human self. So I just drew this mega cover that has both and that's how this drawing came to be. And I think it's a really cool one. Um, I, I like how it turned out. Um, I would like to say this is one of my favorite fan arts I've ever done. Period. I'm actually working on one right now that has the potential of being the best fan art I've ever done. I, I, like period. Like I don't think, like I think before what I would consider my best fan art would be the Euphemia one. From Kogias, I think that was very, very popular. Um, but I think this one might surpass that one just because of the like composition and detail. I'm doing another manga cover. I kind of like wanting to redraw a lot of manga covers because I'm still having an art block and I'm having a hard time coming out with original creative ideas. So I think redrawing manga covers, like there's this whole redraw challenge going on on social media like people started redrawing Sailor Moon again and I've seen people redrawing Ghibli and Hunter Hunter and Card Capture Sakura so like I think just it's a good way to like keep drawing keep being creative without having to come up with an original idea and you keep yourself busy and your hand like working so I think it's pretty cool I, I think redraws are really cool um, I know some people just shit on them because they're not original and they're um, stealing or whatever. Like, nobody's stealing. Nobody's saying, I drew this. Nobody else has drawn this before. Like, people literally say, hey, this is a redraw of this other original scene. Like, how is that stealing? <laughs> it's just so dumb. But I've seen that argument and I just think it's so stupid. Um, like, 
Oh, let's just move on from that. So, um, what's up? How's live? I think last time I talked in this rant, I was saying like I was playing a lot of Animal Crossing and how I wanted one of my villagers to move out so I could get a new one. Um, so one of my villagers moved out two days ago. It was Stu. He was my third villager. Like you get your two initial villagers and then I got Stu. So I was really sad to see him go. He left me like a really nice message and I just was so sad, but it was his time to go. And he, he said he wanted to leave. So, I mean, they all say they want to leave because I guess they don't want like you to feel bad for throwing them out, even though people are just bullying them until they go away because people are horrible, but it's just like a video game. So who cares? But I was super sad and yeah, he left. And then I went village hunting today on stream. And it was like a three hour stream around and like 65 to 70 tickets later, I found Raymond. Now Raymond was like, I had five villagers I really wanted. They were in no particular order except the last one. I wanted Dom, Bob, Coco, Julian, and then last one I, I, I kind of wanted because it's not that I want to keep him forever. It's just that I want to say that I had him. Even though as soon as he wants to leave, I'm going to let him go. But the last one was Raymond and I found Raymond. 60 to 70 um, tickets later. Three hours. So that was fun. Um, I found a lot of really popular villagers on the way and it hurt me because I had like five villagers. Those five villagers I was going to take immediately. And then I had a whole list of backup villagers in case it had been like six hours <laughs> and I still... I hadn't found one and I was just gonna be tired at that point. So I had like a list of backup villagers and I found so many of them. And I found so many popular ones. I, I found like Freya and Marina, which I know are very popular. I found Octavian, which I adore Octavian, but I had him New Leaf and I said that the only villager I was gonna take that I already had was Julian. Cause I had Julian in New Leaf, so I found a lot of like really cute ones and really popular ones. I found one, I already forgot their name, but it was like a little white hamster I had never seen. Oh, ketchup! Ketchup was another priority, so I had six priorities. Ketchup was another priority, but yeah, now I'm just waiting for him to maybe and he'll move in tomorrow. And then, um, wait, tomorrow is Wednesday, so Thursday he would be like moving around and doing stuff because the first day they move in they're just they're in boxes cleaning up or whatever so i'm really excited to have a new villager um before that my last one was kiki which i adore kiki so i'm very excited to have someone new i, I feel like every time i get a new villager it just refreshes the game a little bit makes it feel more fun and honestly i want to dress raymond up in cute dresses I, I dress almost all my villagers up in cute dresses if I'm being honest, especially Angus. Angus really likes dresses. He's like, uh, I think they're he's cranky. Is cranky what it's called? I don't know. I think he's a cranky type. He's like a big um, orange bull and he has like a deep voice. But every time I give him a dress, he's like, oh, you know my style better than I. And he wears the dress and I think that's adorable. So I just like giving them all dresses because everyone looks good in a dress. Um, but yeah, I did that today and I was doing it while I was doing like quizzes because I was going to do this thing on Makeup Monday, which Makeup Monday, if you don't know what it is, it's like every Monday, I do my makeup on stream and I talk and it was just, it's just like, uh, it's, mo it's not so much, sometimes I like talk a lot about the makeup, but it's mostly just about like chatting and not about the makeup and I was gonna do like some quizzes while I did my makeup but since yesterday I had a migraine all morning and all morning and almost all afternoon if I'm being honest and then like every time I have a migraine even after it's gone I, I get like this feeling of just I'm not okay but I can't tell you exactly what's wrong with me like my body's just tired but not sleepy tired it's just like not okay i don't know how to explain it it's a weird feeling so i did nothing yesterday um so i didn't do makeup monday so i decided that since like villager hunting is so tedious um i would do the quizzes while 
I, um, while I did the village hunting and I did some uh, trivia quizzes was the idea. So I did a friends quiz because I feel like I've watched a shit ton of friends since I was a kid. And I did pretty decent. I got like 80 something, I think. And, or was it 60 something? Maybe I got 60 something. I don't remember. It was really hard because they would ask like dates and birthdays and names of characters that were only on one episode. Then I did like two Brooklyn Nine-Nine um, quizzes because I watched a lot of Brooklyn Nine-Nine too. And I didn't like either of them. The first one was a quote one. And like I remember all the quotes. But it, it, I thought it was going to be like filling the blank with the quote. And no, it was like, who said this quote? And I'm terrible at that. Like some of them I guessed. But most of them I just don't remember who said the quote. But I got a good score on it because I kind of was like reading them in my mind with the voices of every character. And then ah, it kind of sounds like this one. Then I did a second one, which was a trivia one. But the, the page was so buggy. Like I would click on an answer and it would scroll up or down all the way. So I would have to constantly be looking for the questions. And I got super frustrated in the end. And then I did a supernatural one. And it was like a super hard supernatural. Because they asked shit that made no sense. And... I think I got a really high score on that one. I think I got an 80 something. Or wait, was that the 69? I think the Supernatural one might have been the 69. I don't even know. Then I started doing like random quizzes just to pass the time. And I ended up making a, um, filling in a, a Twilight. It was supposed to be like, which Twilight character are you? But they has trivia questions in the middle. So it made no sense. And I ended up being Alice, which honestly, out of all the characters, I would either like to be um bella's dad or alice no other character interests me in twilight not that twilight interests me at all anymore i used to be into twilight when i was in like middle school when it was new but as the books i, I read the first book and i remember enjoying the first book i don't think i would enjoy it as an adult but i remember as a middle schooler slash high schooler enjoying like the first book and the second book and then like the third one i left it half read because i just got so bored and then the last one i started reading it and i think i left i think the third the last book breaking dawn had like three parts i think i read the first two parts and then i got bored so i don't even know why i'm saying this you don't care about my non-interest in twilight then the movies came out i watched most of the movies because my friends dragged me to them because I, I had like a group of friends that were like hardcore twilight fans and i think me and another friend kind of like stopped liking it as much but the other one still really really liked it so we still all went to watch the movies um i don't like any of the movies <laughs> I, this, I, I, I know like twilight has gone like this rebirth right now where most people who were into twilight when they were kids like don't feel ash ashamed to say they're into twilight and the thing is as a kid, I don't know, there's, I didn't understand how much wrong was with Twilight. Like, there's just some, so many bad messages and bad writing and just, like, a lot of, um, just, like, romanticizing a very toxic relationship. And as a child or as a teenager, you don't notice those things because, like, it happens a lot. Like, we see shows and books and stuff where they romanticize relationships that are not okay. And as an adult, I I just can't see that being okay. So I think it's very weird when I see people um, like unashamedly liking Twilight and saying that the only reason people don't like Twilight is misogyny. And don't get me wrong, I think a lot of people did not like talk shit about Twilight because it was something quote unquote girls liked. But like a lot of a lot of people I know don't like Twilight and don't approve of it because it's really bad. It has a really bad relationship and it has really weird bad characters and nothing makes sense. Like the whole like, concept of people being immortal and still being in high school baffles me because tell me something like what sane person has lived like hundreds of years or I don't even know. Edward Cullen died from the Spanish flu, so not even a hundred years, but like what kind of people, like just 
a moral person that has been going around for years wants to go back to high school over and over to keep normalcy, you can go live in the middle of the woods and nobody would question it. You know, you're like fucking rich. Just live in the middle of the woods. Nobody's gonna question that you look like a 17 year old and you're not going to school. Say you're homeschooled. Hey, I'm homeschooled. I'm homeschooled. That's why I'm not, I don't go to school. Am I homeschooled? No, but I'm also like a 3000 year old vampire. So who cares? Falsify the papers. Now I'm just on a twilight rant. I'm so sorry. I'm gonna end this because holy shit, it's been 15 minutes. So have a good day. Have a good night. Stay safe. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. And I'll see you on Friday. Bye.